All right. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Toyin Alabe. Uh, I am a web developer. I lead the development team at um, Source Studios. Uh, I've been working with WordPress for a while, uh, let's say like five, six years. And um, it's one of the um, easy to use platform to set up a website for yourself if you are planning to have your own website or your own space, um, your own web presence. So uh, with Alamide and um, Exaplace, uh, we're going to show you how you can um, set up your own online store uh, using this platform. Um, it will be free. Um, all the tools we are using today will be free. Uh, if you're planning to go online, uh, you need to have a domain name and hosting. I'll get to that uh, during the course of the training. But everything you need for this particular training is just your um, internet and uh, <laughs> to pay attention. We sent out a video earlier to show you if you, to take you through how to install WordPress locally. So it's the same process I'm going to go through here. And um, so just like Alamide said, if you have any question, you can jot it down and we're going to take the questions um, later in the course. So now I'm going to share my screen uh, so I can show you some um, things. Uh, okay, just hold for a moment. Okay, uh, so first, uh, what is uh, WordPress? Uh, WordPress is an open source content management system. Uh, it makes it easy to build and manage important aspects of your website, uh, like the content, products, gallery, etc. Uh, you don't need to know anything about programming to use WordPress, uh, just like we're going to demonstrate in this uh, webinar. Uh, WordPress currently runs uh, almost uh, over 37% of the websites on the internet as at now. Uh, so if you check the statistic, uh, it means like one out of every five websites you go through is likely run on websites, uh, on WordPress, sorry. Uh, so what kinds of website can you make with WordPress? Uh, honestly, the list is endless. You can create any type of WordPress, any type of website using WordPress. I keep mixing the website and WordPress together. You can create uh, just anything with uh, WordPress uh, from your business website. Uh, Olamide has uh, two websites that run, uh, one for Exile Place and one for Exile SMS. Both are running on WordPress. My own, our own Source Studios NG is on WordPress. Uh, you can have e-commerce stores, the demo we're going to do today using WordPress. You can have membership websites. Uh, you want to have your own organization. You want to have members where they register a community website. You can use WordPress for it. You can have forums uh, like Naira Land uh, where people come in and comment and discuss. Uh, you can have real estate websites using WordPress. You can have news websites. Uh, majority of our, our news outlets in Nigeria, they actually use uh, WordPress. I know Vanguard, uh, Punch, I think Guardian too. So the list is actually endless. You can extend WordPress to do whatever you want it to do. Uh, so the different types of WordPress. Uh, so we get asked these questions every time. When people Google WordPress or they want to run their web websites online, uh, they are more, most of them know WordPress.com where you can sign up and you just have your link, maybe Tony at WordPress.com. Then you have your website set up and there's WordPress.org, the one we are going to be demoing today. Uh, this one is self-hosted. Uh, you download the WordPress core file. You know, as I mentioned earlier, WordPress is free and it's open source. So you can download the WordPress file itself, put it on your own server, create your own theme, or you buy premium templates if you want, and you use it to run your website. 
So the dot org um, is self hosted, it's free, it's open source. Uh, you install it and you're in control of everything you do on the platform. You, you're in control of your theme, you're in control of all the plugins. You have to get your own web hosting. You have to secure your site. You have to pay, you have to uh, use plugins or from your web hosting companies to secure your uh, platform. The WordPress.com is a bit different. It's the commercial WordPress. It is run by Automatic, the name of the uh, WordPress company. So your WordPress is installed on their server, uh, just like we have um, accounts on Facebook. So Facebook manages all our accounts. But the difference with WordPress.com is you pay. To an extent, you have free service. And or if you want to extend it, you have to pay for the uh, services, just like a uh, for example, installing a theme, getting some plugins, you have to pay for those. Uh, everything here is taken care of by automatic. So they're in charge of your hosting, they secure your site, they take care of everything for you, but you have to build your website up, obviously. Uh, so who uses WordPress? Uh, uh, excuse me. So we use WordPress. WordPress is used by private individuals, big organizations, uh, government, schools, etc. Uh, there's some example of websites that runs on WordPress. Okay, uh, if you go to First Bank, uh, First Bank here in Nigeria, their website is built on WordPress. Microsoft's website, the, their blog, news.microsoft.com, is built on WordPress. Sterling Bank is built on WordPress. Uh, UBA Group website is built on WordPress. Uh, even whitehouse.gov, the US, the America uh, White House, <laughs> their website is built on WordPress. So the list is endless. You have big company to have big players using this tool so it is secure it is um, extensible you can use it to do whatever you want to to do so why wordpress uh one as i've mentioned before wordpress is free and it's open source so with uh, if you want to extend wordpress you will need uh, developers for example but to build basic things you don't need the developer or anything for that. So when I say open source, it means like I can get WordPress, I can modify it, I can change the codes and things. But even as a layman, if you don't know anything about programming and things, you can still extend WordPress either by going to marketplace to buy templates, you buy plugins, you buy um, themes, things that you can use to make your WordPress run. So there are developers that have developed themes and plugins that you can use to extend your own WordPress. WordPress has a large community base, so if you run into any trouble using WordPress, you can easily Google your uh, issue online and you're going to get response to that uh, immediately, or you see links to forums where you can get help with that. WordPress is easy to install. Uh, we're going to demonstrate that, or if you've tried the video that we sent out earlier, you will see like you can easily install WordPress uh, on your local server if you want to. It is flexible, so you can start and go through it uh, anytime you want. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do with it. You can easily manage your content, create new content on WordPress. Uh, so I'm going to start my uh, Bitnami you now. This is the software I shared earlier. Uh, then we're going to go through how to run our own WordPress. So I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, so this is my own Bitnami. I have it installed before. And if I just click this, I'll just run the software. Go to applications. Uh, and here is my own WordPress installation. Uh, when you install WordPress for the first time, it comes I'm with sorry, the... sorry to cut you. So okay. are we supposed to be doing this um, alongside with you? 
I think it would be better if you just follow through or if you can watch and <laughs> do it at the same time, then okay. it's fine. Okay, yeah. if you want to watch and do, or oh, just follow through. And then I can share the link with just the people here to watch and follow later. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, so when you have WordPress installed for the first time, it comes with the latest theme. Every year, WordPress releases a new theme. You have 2017, 2018, 2019, and here is WordPress theme 2020. So it, when you install WordPress afresh, you have something like this. And this is the front end of the website. So you go to the back end, the administrative panel of your WordPress installation. All you have to do is to type in WP hyphen admin. Because I'm currently logged in, uh, it's not prompting me to log in again. Uh, but if you're logging in for the first time, you're going to see the box to put in your username and the password where you you uh, where you can log into this admin area. So now I'm going to walk you through like the WordPress dashboard. Uh, this is just a, a panel. But here is what is more important to us. So in WordPress, you have what we call posts and pages. So uh, if we have a company, for example, and our company uses WordPress, so we'll have something like a home page, an about us page, um, a services page, contact us page, and we'll have something like news, where we keep our updates, the articles and things that we write time to time. For posts, uh, this is what you use to write your articles, your blog post on your own website. So when you go to your own website and you, you see a section, a link on the website that says blog or link or news, all their content are saved under this post type. So in WordPress, we, we have things called post types. Post is a type of a post type and pages, uh, page is a type of a post type. So post the articles that you write pages are static pages like you have like your own page and about us page so here you see the post and you can Wait, sorry we're just still seeing your folder is that what you're showing us oh no 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 i've left let me switch <laughs> okay sorry about that let me just switch my screen uh Hold on, please. Okay, can you see my admin page now? Hello, Mide. Yes, we are. So maybe you yes, go back sir. to where you started with the post pages okay. and all of us. Okay, okay. All right, sorry about that. I'm sharing like just part of my screen. So this is the WordPress admin page, like I've said before. So we have dashboard. We have these links on the sidebar. You have on the, this black panel right here. So you have the dashboard, which is where I am currently. It's just you have information about your current site. There's basically nothing to do here. Then we have post. This is the link I've been talking about. This is a type of a post type. You use it to write articles, you write news updates for your site and things. So if you have, just like we're going to build um, an e-commerce store, for example, now, and you have like latest news, this is where you're going to come to, to write like a new article. Links that you send out to people to read your articles. This is what you do, so you have all posts, and you can easily just click add new to add a new post and you have this panel right here where you can type in your post type too. So if I'm seeing demo post and you have like a block here where you can put in your content area so you can use paragraph. Uh, so I'll say this is a demo post and once I'm done with this I can easily publish or save it as a draft but i won't do anything here so let me just uh 
go back. Uh, I'll leave. Um, to create this, so we'll come back to this area. I would like us to install a plugin so it's more, it is easier for you to follow instead of using the pattern box. Here we have categories on that post. So if we have post relating to different categories, so let's say um, I have post and it's about beauty. So I can create a category and I'll group all my posts on that beauty and that category. If I have category called footwear and I want to group post that re that's related um, to shoes, uh, sneakers, kind of footwear, I'll create a new category for that one too. It's make it easier for you to structure your content. So you create a category for uh, your post. And there's what we call tags. Tags to are like categories. It's, so for example, now I can write an article about footwear, but my footwear is Nike. So my foot, my, um, my post um, belongs to footwear categories and in my tags, I can tag it as Nike, um, sneakers and things like that. So when you click on the tag, it brings up all that post that belongs to that or that have that particular tags. So people can actually read uh, related articles. Below post, you have media. This is where you manage all your images, videos, PDF files, Word documents, whatever you want to upload into your article. So if you are creating a post now and I'm uploading like an image to the post, this is where the post, the image will be saved. You have comments here. Yeah? Uh, so when people comment on your post, this is where you approve, unapprove, or you reply them as the administrator of your own site. And here is the appearance part of WordPress. This is where we change our website look and feel. Uh, this is where, this is themes. Uh, so this is the theme that we have activated at the moment, 2020 templates. If I want to change to another one, I'm going to activate this or activate this one. If I have a template that I want to use, either by by either I have a template from the marketplace or I want to add a new one from WordPress. If I have it on my local system, I can click here to upload a template. I can click this link to upload the template or search the marketplace here to get um, a template. I'm still going to come back to this one because we are installing a template for our e-commerce uh, store. When we have our templates, we can customize here. Widgets, uh, we'll come back to this too. Menus, um, this is the navigation on your site where you have um, about uh, the links on your site. When we install our templates, we'll still come back to this one. Say, theme editor, it's for people I know a bit about code, so you can edit or change some things here. Most times you don't need this if you don't know how to do it. Then we'll come to plugins. Uh, plugins are what make your WordPress site uh, extensible. So you can, the way it is at the moment, this is just a WordPress installation. For me to convert this to a store where people can come, to um, buy products, pay online, and you know, I get notification that the um, purchase has been made on my site. I need a plugin on this particular website, and um, use what plugin to extend your website to extend the um, the functionality of your website. By default, these were installed by um, Bitnami. So the migration plugin is for moving from one, from this local host, because I'm building locally. If I want to move it online, this is like a plugin I'm going to use. AMP is a plugin that, so, so let me go through this. <laughs> I'll just come back to, we'll install the ones that we need for now. And users, this is where you see everyone registered on your site, your customers, your administrators, your 
shop managers you can create a new user and give them roles you let them you assign roles so they have capabilities you can limit their roles to whatever you want them to do on your website uh settings this is tools we can skip this for now so under settings for this is the name of my website this is what i saved as the name of my website i call it um, e-commerce site so if i want to change this to something else i can name it uh twin store if i want or i can say twin footwear so the tagline is what you see when you over on my uh, website. So you see, instead of having just a WordPress site, you can see something else here. So if you change this one, I can see for the best footwear. My URL, I'm local, I'm on localhost. Localhost means is my local computer. So it's this default URL. This is my email. You can change it here. Uh, anyone can register. If I want people to register, I can click this option. And when people register, the default rule assigned to them will be subscribers. When we install our e-commerce um, plugin, you have other rules here, but we can skip this one for now. My site's language is this, English, your time zone. We set um, it's set to this and UTC, so I can change it to my zone, which is Africa, Lagos. And the date is written this way. So if I save changes, you can now see I have my local time right here, which is 7.33, and the universal time is 6.33. So this is just a rundown uh, of the WordPress dashboard. So now we're going to go to uh, appearance to install a theme. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to, I, I would like to clear up sometimes. If you're trying to build a website online, you will need what we call a domain name. Domain name is uh, the name that you type into a web address, results to an IP but you just need to know it as a name that you type into your address that so it brings up your website. So if you go to sourcestudiosng.com or exaplace.com, you're going to see a website. Exaplace.com here is the domain name. And you can register a domain name from in any domain registrar. So you can have a domain name without having a website. It's possible. You will have a domain name. It means you have your name reserved. But if you have a domain name and you don't have hosting for that particular domain name, which means your name is not hosted anyway, yeah, you can't have a website. You can have an uh, email address at that name, for example, unless you're using things like Office 365, where you have to resolve your name. They are pointing that your particular domain name to another server. So for you to do something with your domain name, you need a server which is the hosting account. So when you're buying a domain name and hosting together from like a registrar, maybe Google Host or um, GoDaddy or uh, GigaLayer, and you buy the two together, you're going to have a domain name and hosting. It's when you have hosting that you can create a website or create emails on your platform. So now we're going to install, um, I'll install a thing. I'll add a new one. There's a particular free theme from Automatic, the company that makes um, WordPress. Uh, it's called Storefront. It's a WooCommerce theme. So if I step here and I can search for Storefront. So here's the template right here. You can preview this. You can search for another website um, template if you want. So this is just a preview. It's just pages because we don't have WooCommerce installed. But now you can just click this button right here to install this template. And it's installing. Uh, 
going to take a few minutes to install. There are other templates um, in the marketplace that you can install if you want. You can just search for e-commerce, but this is free and it's easy to configure. But when you're going up um, premium, you have you, you can use this to start a store, basic store, just to have your uh, website online. But if you want to go advanced, you want to have custom designs and things, there's a marketplace. Uh, themeforest.net that you can go to and search for templates where you can buy templates for your website. Okay, we've installed this template right now, uh, storefront, and to activate it, you just click the activate button. Now we have a new template under our themes folder. Well, we're trying to build an e-commerce store. This won't work. Then I'll say if I go back to pages, you will not see any difference. You won't see any product. So what the first thing I would like to do is to install WooCommerce. So you come to plugins and you click add new. Uh, first, I would like to install this temp, uh, this plugin, Classic Editor. Uh, it's an interface better than the other one that you saw while I was trying to create a post. It's just an editor for your content. I prefer using this one. You can use the inbuilt WordPress editor if you like, but this is just preference, so personal preference, so you can install any one that you want. So I'm going to go work and add WooCommerce. So this plugin right here, it's what turns our basic website to a shop. At the moment, our installation is just a WordPress website. You can do anything, you can buy, you can manage products, you can do anything. This plugin is what extends our WordPress installation and converts it into an online store. And you can see just like that, said before, there are plugins that you can use to extend functionalities of your website. So you can see PDF invoices, Stripe payments, and things like that. This will add another functionality to your website for you to be able to receive payments using Stripe. We'll, we use Paystack here in Nigeria, Paystack or Flutter with, you don't use PayPal. So we have plugins for that too, for this particular WooCommerce. So I'm going to, I'm installing this plugin. Uh, it's taking. Okay, I think my intern is a bit slow, so it's taking more than. Okay, this is internet. It's not supposed to take this long.
I'm trying to reload my page and to see if I can just get it started. I'm going to try installing again. Okay, so while Tony is um, refer trying to refresh his page, so if you if you are following and you understand, please raise your hand so that not your physical hand, just press the raise hand um, so that we know that you are following the the hand um, icon on your on your page. Okay, Yinka is raising his hand. Miriam, Shegon, Ujuwa, are you guys following? Okay, Miriam's hand is raising her hand. Okay. Uh... This is taking longer than expected. So I'm just going to try it on the quick method. WooCommerce is just nine megabytes. So it's just supposed to take this long to install. I'm going to do download it to my local system and just do a quick activate one. All right, so I'm just going to refresh this page. I've downloaded it locally, so I'm going to install. I'm just going to activate it instead. So I have it installed. I didn't install it from the marketplace. I downloaded it from WordPress website. And so I can just activate because I've added it to my root folder. So now I have WordPress activated. And you're going to get this. Um, screen where you can set up your store it's going to add all the pages necessary pages for you so we're going to do this right now just click yes please so the address uh, i can just put any address i want and use any poster code. Then you just click continue. So this is my store details, assuming that this is my store location, country, we're in Lagos, I'm in Lagos, and I click continue. Uh, now I don't want to do tracking. So industry, what do you sell? Uh, what kind of products do you have? Uh, what uh, niche do you target? So let's do fashion. I think that sells now. And click continue. So what kind of products do you sell? Physical products, yes. Uh, downloadable products are where you sell things like softwares or you sell ebooks. You sell subscriptions for membership and things. But now we're going to do physical products, i.e. shoes or t-shirts or jewelry. Business details. Uh, so how many products do you have? So we're going to do one to ten. So we're not selling anywhere else. We're just going to do this one. Um, if you want to instead your WooCommerce, you can do market on Facebook. There's a plugin for that. Uh, I don't want to install this. So I won't complicate issues here. You can extend plug where well, WooCommerce with. Mailchimp. So when people buy from your store, you can add them to your list and create automation. You can do Google sales at with WooCommerce. These are extensions, but I'm just going to turn this off. Then I'm going to click continue. 
So I have a template already. Uh, so this is the one I'm using. Uh, we installed this template earlier, storefront. Then I can just use this one. Did I install another one? Okay. So no thanks. Now we have our store setup, which we commerce. So here's the WooCommerce dashboard. Now you see like we have a new plugin. We have a new menu item on this left panel right here. So you have WooCommerce, which is a plugin we installed. So this is our dashboard. This is our dashboard. Uh, you have others. You have coupons, you have customers, you have reports, you have settings, you have status, and you have extensions. For your inbox, you can check if you have new message from your store. If there's a new order, you can click this one to see it. If you have products running low on stock, you can see this one. If there's new reviews on your site, you can see things like this from this section right here. So I'm going to go to WooCommerce settings. Uh, we're going to set up a few things. So this is our address, what I set up earlier. So uh, selling location, do you want to sell to all countries or to just the base country? So I'm just going to say I sell to specific countries and I only sell to Nigeria. So you can't buy my product from US. If I want to sell the product everywhere, I'm going to do that select I sell to all countries eh? but because I just want to restrict to Nigeria I'll do this shipping location yes I ship to all countries I sell to if you select different options here eh, you can configure this based on the countries you want to ship your product to the default customer location should be the base address uh, if you want to enable taxes on our product we'll click this option to enable taxes and calculations for I'm going to keep it simple enable the use of coupons so you want people to use coupon codes to get five percent off your product or one thousand naira off products or one thousand naira off products in a particular part category you can use this one just leave this option checked so I will leave this step because we're going to create um, a coupon later on then our currency settings, we're in Nigeria, so you just change this to Naira. If you want to sell in dollars, you can select the currency you want. The currency position is left. Then I'm going to click uh, Save Changes here. For products, few pages have been installed when we installed WooCommerce. Uh, let me quickly go to pages. So you see we have new pages. Before we only have this sample page. But after installing the WooCommerce, we have some pages installed for us. So we have a shop page, which is the page where you see when you where all your products will be displayed. You have my accounts page, a page where I as a customer can see my previous orders. I can log into my shop and Place, uh, see the previous others, cancel others and things. Checkout page, page where you proceed to checkout pay. Cart page, normal when I had a product to cut, this is where the product will be displayed. These are default pages for WooCommerce. You don't need to add anything here. The pages are already configured for you. So I'm going to go back to settings and we have the pages set up for us here so if you want you have enable ajax button so when i click i don't want the page to reload and things like that then we come to shipping uh so if i'm selling products in lagos and i want to create a shipping zone uh and shipping cost for people in lagos and they pay one thousand naira flat but for people in or your or open states, I want to charge them 1,500. This is where I'm, I'll do it. So let me just do one. So let me add the shipping zone. 
and I'll say uh, Lagos. This is a lead region. I'm just going to say Lagos, Nigeria. And to so I'll configure the shipping method for this zone. So I can say it's flat rate. I can okay. So let's say people in Lagos we do free shipping to make it this for us. So I'll have shipping method to this particular zone. So from people in Lagos, our zone name in Lagos it doesn't have to be the same as the states. So let me just change it to Lagos customers. But the region is Lagos, Nigeria. This is important. And the shipping method for this region is free shipping. So if you're in Lagos and you buy from our store, you won't be charged for shipping. So I'm going to save changes. Right here. I can go back to my shipping zones. So I have one for Lagos customers. So let me add another one for Southwest. And this will be for people from, for your, okay. Option. Oh, that's how best I do have. Okay. Uh, don't let me go far. They are far. This go, this, these guys are far. So let's just do, uh, Ogun and for your states, but you can add as many as you want. And I'm going to add a shipping method for people in this zone. I'm going to charge them a flat rate. Now let me configure my flat rate for this zone. I will charge them two thousand five hundred naira to ship to this location. I don't want it to be taxable. So let me leave it as none. So we have another shipping zone for Southwest and it's there. So now you see we have two shipping zones. We have one for Lagos customer and we have people for not um, the Southwest. So you have free shipping and flat rates. These are calculations. So on shipping page, you want to calculate the shipping. Yes, we want to. Uh, your shipping destination should default to customer billing address. Yes, but they can change it if they want. These are the shipping classes. We don't have a class yet. Uh, I can skip this one for now. Payment method. So we can do cash on delivery. Later, I will show you how to configure pay stack where you can accept payments online for your store because we're really running out of time and i don't want to waste time right here so we can do cash on, on delivery for this as if changes and this we've configured our store to this point we don't have any others for now and coupons i mentioned i talked about coupon before so let me create a coupon so i'll call the coupon code store one zero zero x5 and i'm going to put a discount type uh on the cart so if i have ten thousand naira worth of products in my cart i want to give them uh 250 naira off if i do this one if i do percentage discount it means i want to give percentage of this percentage of the discount two percent discount fixed product discount is the same as this fiscal discount i'm giving this particular amount of this particular product so let's do cut let's do 250 naira of our product of our cut if i want the coupon to expire i can set expiration dates for the coupon so i can set it to expire july fourth that's independence day in america so we can have this like this and i can save this i can publish this coupon this means if any user in copy this coupon and add it to their checkout page they are going to get 250 naira off their cart i can restrict the usage of this uh coupon code i don't want people to use it if they don't spend up to 
5,000 Naira. Right. So you can overall this one, allow you to set the minimum spend subtotal to use this discount. Maximum spend, you can spend any amount. Or if I don't, if it's a percentage discount and you don't want people buying product up to like 500,000 to get like 50% of the product, you can set the limits on like, you can only use this coupon if your product is less than 200k, for example. If I want to restrict this coupon to products, I'll just type the product's name right here. I'll search for products and I'm going to set it here. But just let me update this. And this is our store settings. So now let's move to product. Uh, we have product created for us. Okay, we don't have any. So I'm going to create a simple product for a start. So let me call this T-shirt. This would be a simple product. Uh, and this, we have um, a new interface because I installed the classic editor. So if I have a description about these products, just let me copy Lorem Ipsum here. Uh, so I'm just going to drop this one right here. It's just a dummy text for this product. This is the product I have. Now we'll talk about categories when we we're talking about post. When you're creating product to, you can group your product into categories. Now I'm selling t-shirts. And if this belongs to men category, I can create a new category called men. Right here. And this t-shirt will automatically go under this category. So the general, uh, we have different kind of products. We're going to talk about simple products and variable products. You know? uh, so for now, let me create a simple product, which is this T-shirt. And the regular price for this product is, let me just put 300 there, or 3,000 there. Okay. It's not on sale, so I'm not going to put a sale price here. Then to manage the inventory, if you have SKU, as you have a um, stock keeping unit code for your store, you can put it right here. To manage stock, yes, let me try this one. So this will deduct the, um, will manage the stock when people purchase this particular products from your store. If I have 10 in stock at the moment, so when someone buys one unit of this, you will have nine left. And when you don't have anything, you as an administrator, you will get a notification and like the product will show out of stock on the front end of your website. Allow back orders. This um, settings is if you want people to order for this product if you don't have it in stock. So I don't want to allow it. Low stock threshold to, I can set it to four. So it means like this product is almost out of stock. If you want it to be allow what well, one of these items to be bought in a single other, you check this option. You can leave this on check. We don't need it. So shipping, if you're doing um, weight-based shipping, I can set the weight here. I'm just going to skip this one. These are other preferences that you can follow. Dimensions, shipping class. We don't have a class because we're not doing any of this. And we don't have any linked product for this particular product. Attribute is for when we're using a variable product. So I'm going to skip this section also. So we're just creating a simple product in WooCommerce. And the product is 3,000 Naira. The product is uh, T-shirt and belongs to main categories. To main category. If I want to tag this T-shirt, so if it's Nike, I can tag, tag it and it's um, brown, mm -hmm. oh, I can have something like that for it. As tags. Product image, I uh, to set the image for this product. So we're going to upload an image. So let me just get one image of Google real quick. I 
Okay, okay. So I just downloaded this image for this t-shirt and I'm going to set the product image. Product gallery, so if you have multiple images for these products, you have the front, you have the back, you have every other thing that you want people to over on and see the images you check. I'm just going to use the same image here as the product image. If you want short description for this product, I can just put this, this, a uh, chat. Now I'll publish this product. Once I publish this product, the product is now available on the front end of the site. So you can click this. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, can yes. you know if you see? We can. Okay, so you can see the products right here. Allow me, can you see the product? We're seeing, t I'm seeing t-shirts. Yeah, you can see the t-shirt yeah, product. product, okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the front end of the site. Uh, so you have a t-shirt and you can add That's to cart. Oh, okay. So that's uh so let me let me let me open it on this page. I'm sharing just one tab. Okay. I just realized I'm sharing a tab, not my old desktop. Okay. So you can see the you can <laughs> you can see the products now. So this is the products, and this is the short description I typed in. This is a blue shirt. This is the full description of the product. The lawyer made some text. And you see, we have 10 in stock because we were doing stock management. You can add this product to cart. I already clicked add to cart before. So you can see I have a cart section right here and we have a product and I can go to checkout. If I don't want to check out yet, I can go back and go to my cart to see my products. Let's say I want to change the quantity of this product. So I can do two. And I'll update my cart. Uh, we talked about coupon before. So if I want to apply the coupon, I'll apply it here. So let me run to my back end quick and copy that coupon code. So we have a coupon that gives you 250 Naira off the total. So I'm just going to paste that coupon code here. And I'm going to apply the coupon. And you can see that we have the 250 naira deducted from the 6,000. And because I live in Lagos and it's shipping to Lagos, my shipping is free. If I want to deliver it somewhere else, if I change to, uh, so we set for Ogun, Ogun, I think, or oh, you. Yeah. And I do the pardon. And I update. You can see that I have the shipping fee to ship to Ibada in Ogun State for 2,500 Naira, which we configured when we were setting up our store. So this is how you set up a basic, uh, a simple product in WooCommerce. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to set up a variable product for us. A variable products, a product where you can select your so just like this t-shirt you can select the size of your t-shirt if you're using medium large uh extra large you want to change the color and the price of the product is based on the option you actually select so i'm going to do another one for this i'll do so let me do footwear but let me do uh, shoes, flat shoe. And here I'm going to put it on the women category. Now I'll copy the same lawyer into, in some text. I'm going to drop it here. Okay. 
just so we have something in the box. Let's drop this one here. But instead of selecting a simple product here, I'm going to select a variable product. So when you select variable products, you can now add variations and attributes. So let me publish this first. I'll go down and I'll click attributes. So we don't have any attribute for this product, but we're trying to sell flat shoes. And we want, uh, we can do color based or size based. So let me do, anyway. So let me do size first. And we do, if you're wearing size 40, we have for that. If we have for size 44, do we have size 44 shoe? 43. And I do 42. You have to separate each variation with this pipe sign. This pipe sign, you need it to separate the variation. In. So you have size 40, size 43, and size 42 of this shoe. And yes, it's going to be visible on the product page. And we will use it for variation. So I can save this attribute. So now we have attribute for size. So let me add another one for color. So you have blue. No? You have um, brown and black. This year. And we're going to use this for variation also. So you see, we now have two attributes for this flat shoe. You can see, you can change it by clicking the drop down if you want, and we'll save that attribute. Now to add the variations to this product, you go here and click on variation and click add variation. So we can just click, select this option, create variations from all attributes and you click on go. So we have six variations added. So if you're using size 40 and brown shoe, I want to set the price for this to 3,500 for size 40 color brown. And I only have uh, SKU is the same as the SKU. And I want to manage this stock because I only have one of these size 40 and color brown. I can add the image here if I'm using different images. So let me just look for a brown shoe on Google and upload so we can see. I'm just going to save just a default image. And I'm going to upload. So this is for the brown shoe. Yeah, size 40 color brown. If it's size 40 color black, we have two of this. And I can set this one to 5,000. Let me look at another image. So I'm just going to do this too, but we all get the drill. So I'm going to add the image for the color black. And we have black here. And I'm sending this one for 5,000. And I have just two in stock. So I have one of brown and I have one. I have one of brown and I have um, two of the black. That's how you're going to set for each of your variation. If you have different price, different quantity, that's how you're going to do it. And I can just click save changes. So here I can add the product image. I'll use the black one. Then for product gallery, I can select this and this. So we have two images in our gallery. So we have this right here. Then I'll update this product. 
So if we come to this product now, and you see we're from 3,500 to 5,000. So if I want to select what size do I wear, size 40, because I, do, I did not um, add product for other variations, they won't show here. I didn't add for size 42 or size 43. And what color do I wear? Brown. This shoe right here. And the shoe is for 3,500. If I change it to black, you can see it's 5,000 and it's updated right here. So I can add this to my cart. I only have two in stock. I can add this to my cart and I can view cart. So I have this flat shoe, size 40, black in stock. So this is how you create a variable product uh, in WooCommerce. Uh, because of time, I'm sorry, I have to rush you to creating this product. I didn't create for um, other variation, um, other variation of this particular product. But if you want to add more, you just go to the variations and you click size 43, you set the price for it. So I can easily just do that. Let me say 4,000 for this. And I have uh, six. And for this, I will set 7,000. And I have 10. And for this, I will set 1,500. And I have just one. And for this, I will set it to 2,200, and I have just three. When you don't remember to save changes, and you update your product. So now if you go back to this product, you see it's now from 1,500, because I can select size 42, and I can select black which is 2,200. I can select brown, which is 1,500. So this is how uh, you set up a variable product in WooCommerce. So let's go back to our dashboard uh, so I can show you how to set up uh, payment. Uh, we use Paystack. If you, you will need to register on Paystack to get um, what is called a key in order to use uh, payment gateway. I'll just show you how to set up, uh, how to install the plugin. Yeah, yeah and we'll, I'll take questions. So I'll go back to plugins and install the plugin. I'll do add new. Then you can just search for a stack. So this is the one, because you're using WooCommerce, you need this space stack WooCommerce payment gateway. And I'm going to install, click on install. It says installing. I don't know why it's taking a lot of time to install on my local. Okay, so I've installed and I closely activate. I've activated it. So I'll go back to my WooCommerce. You go to settings and under payments, I can now enable pay stack. And I save changes. But because I've not entered, um, I've not configured my pay stack state settings, you're seeing that I need to configure the details here which is under payments, I need to put in my key for test. Let me see if I have any that I saved. Okay, so I don't have anyone saved here. Uh, this won't be correct. There's a test. Uh, I promise not remembering anyone. But you need the two keys. You'll get from Paystack to configure this, um, your test key and your public key. When you're ready to go live, you just uncheck this option 
so payments can go directly into your um, own account and you click on save changes this won't work because it's not it's not correct but when you, if you have this correctly set up on your cart page when people check out uh, when they go to products and they visit your cart page for example let me click here and i go to uh my cart i have two products here and I go to the checkout page you will see the option for pay stack here make payments using debit card which is pay stack payments and you, when you click on place order you see the option to input your card details and things like that so i'm going to uh round up here and i'll take uh, questions if you have any concerning this Olamide, over to you. Thank you, Tony. Um, I believe that um, we have we have learned something. Um, I personally have questions. Maybe I'll start with the question. What's the time? So we have about fifteen minutes to ask questions. My own question is this, you know my question, but let me ask, there might, there might be people here. So I, I okay. have actually a personal website. Okay. You know, I want to um, do commerce on it. I want to be able to have maybe olamideyellow.com slash shop. Yes. How do I yes. do that? Do I need okay. to install? template or all I just need to do is install WooCommerce and do all of this thing. So by default, when you install WooCommerce plugin, it sets up pages for you. I showed this earlier. So you have pages set up for you by default. This page is, comes with WooCommerce, like the cart page. If you remember when we opened this page, when we activated our own template, we didn't have these pages. This yeah. checkout, we didn't have um cards we didn't have my account we didn't have shop page so if i go to my own websites now i have these pages there so if i click on cart i go here you see like i have a cart page if i go to slash shop you will see all the products just to we have two products right regardless you see of the templates used regardless of the templates once you install woocommerce woocommerce will install these pages for you okay. this card page this checkout page this my account page and the shop page my account page is where you see my details i can put in my i can see my previous orders i can see my addresses i can see my payment method that's my account details okay. yeah i think this 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 works um does anyone else have a question let's have i have a question I to unmute your mics now please miriam go ahead okay and um, first of all thank you for the lecture and um, please can you explain how you um opened after installing and that when you were uh, displaying that part it was still showing your folder so if you can go over it again how you open this page this um wordpress page the app after installing uh, okay you installed bitnami yes i did okay so if you installed bitnami you go to the folder let me just walk you through it's uh so if you go to the folder do you know the folder where bitnami is installed on your site on your computer yes, yes. okay so you see um when you click that folder so let me go to my own root folder you see wordpress 5.4.2 abby yes okay you click on that wordpress you see other folders then you see apps right yes app is the second one when you okay. open app you see wordpress okay right can you see the WordPress? Yes. What? Okay. When you see WordPress, when you open WordPress folder, you have folders and you see a folder called HT Docs. Right? Yeah. 
Okay. That is where your WordPress is installed. Okay. If you back, but if you want to launch your own Bitnami, if you want mm. to launch it so it can show, you back mm. out. So go back to the root folder, just go, go back to Bitnami and open WordPress 5.2 points okay. where you see all the folders. And mm. you see a particular application called manager I think window.exe. Can you see the can you see the app? Come again, what did you call it? Manager I think windows.exe. Okay. You can see it. Yes. So when you click that one, you use it to launch your WordPress. So you can see your installation on your local server. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, does anyone else have a question? Yinka. So there are two Yinkas here. Um, Yinka, Atiba, Yinka, Taiwo, Shegon, Ujowa. So I want to believe every one of us. Do we need the video? Do you need me to send the link to the video? Oh, no, no. I have no questions. No question. Okay. So, Toyin, if we have questions, can we, if, if they start installing, if we have questions, can we, can we get in touch? Sell yourself now. Yes, yes, sure, sure. If, if you have any problem, <laughs> if you have any question installing this or, um, or um, any clarification on how to set up the, the local server, you can send an email. Uh, to toying at uh, toyingalabri.com, then I can, or you can send to my Gmail. Yeah, well, I'm there will share my Gmail <laughs> email with you. I mean, you can get quick response from that. So she can direct the questions to Olamide and she can. No, 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 let them reach out to you, Toyin. <laughs> she, she can, oh she can solve that one. It's social she, media now. Um, so I will just so you can, you can, Yeah. Yeah, so I'll also be sharing the link to this video when you're stuck. Well, I'll also be reaching out to Tony because I'm also a learner. Um, thank you all for joining, Tony. Do you want to tell us about Source Studios so that? If they want to build other websites or other, so we have how many minutes more? We have five minutes more, so we can. Uh, use yes, that. Uh, so we 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 are a web design agency. Uh, we work remotely, basically, so we don't really have a physical address. So we help um small businesses and small and large businesses, but we are more focused on SMEs. We help them set up their um web presence. So if you want a, a company website or like an e-commerce store, like we walk you through a professional site where you can um, have sell your products or you just want something to put yourself online, your portfolio. If you're a blogger, you want to set up like a news. We are here for you. So you can always check us out at sourcestudiosng.com. All right. So that's all about that. Please follow Excel, please. Um, subscribe to that YouTube channel that we, we, we sent to you. We'll have more resource. Next training will be in July, and it is really focused on accounting for small businesses. So um, thank you all.